This is the Continuum Lab. I'm Jeppe, musician, maker and your host on this visit. In today's video I get into the mouthpiece and the analog sensors on the open horn MIDI system, my main project in the lab. But first, a short disclaimer. The Continuum has no end and no beginning. It represents the sum total of all knowledge, stretching from the unnoticeably small and to the incomprehensibly vast. So the Continuum Lab is not really a physical space at all. I think of it as a state of mind, like a mental leap of faith from the comfortable platform of the known and into the infinite ignorance, where learning is the only method of propulsion. Welcome to the Continuum Lab. Now you might think that all you need in order to make a cool wind instrument MIDI controller is the breath sensor itself. But if you play an acoustic wind instrument like I do, then you'll know that any wind instrument mouthpiece responds to a multitude of variables, which is why the open horn mouthpiece is full of sensors. There's six sensors in there. There's the breath sensor itself, then there's two sensors for the pitch bend functionality, then there's a lower and an upper lip position sensor, and then the tongue sensor, of course, tongue position sensor. So let's see what that looks like. So ignoring for the moment the lip position sensors, the rest of the sensors are all analog and they use exactly the same uh, components in slightly different ways to achieve very high sensitivity and very high precision readings of the uh, breath air pressure, the neck bend angle and the tongue position within the mouth. The breath sensor works by pressurizing one side of a membrane inside the mouthpiece so that it expands into the other side gradually blocking the light cone of an LED that falls onto a photodiode. Now, while the breath sensor is not the only important sensor for expressivity, it's certainly the most important one, and it's also the sensor that demands the highest precision, uh, responsiveness, and speed. Now, the current iteration is extremely responsive and is very, very fast, and uh, it can be calibrated to suit individual tastes. The pitch bend sensor in the neck functions by a similar principle, this time interrupting light that flows through small tunnels in the lower part of the mouthpiece with the filament that's attached to the upper part of the mouthpiece. There are two uh, sensors, one on each side of the mouthpiece, and it's the interplay between these two opposing sensors that produces the final pitch bend output. The tongue sensor is a bit different in that it has to be activated by placing the upper lip on top of the raised part of the mouthpiece. This activates the LED and sensor and simultaneously uncovers them so that a measurement can be made inside the player's mouth. So it's really kind of a reflection sensor, if you will, in which the inside of the player's mouth is illuminated by the LED like this. And then the position of the tongue within the mouth determines the amount of light that's reflected back on the photodiode. Keep an eye on my throat here so you can see how I make it work. So you're essentially measuring something like mouth cavity, which as anyone who plays an acoustic wind instrument will tell you is a real thing. It has a huge effect on tone. I do realize that each of these sensors could easily be the subject for a whole video all by itself and they probably will be at some point, but I just can't fit everything into this short series of videos here and this presentation. So let me just quickly say that they're all based on the BPW34 PIN photodiode and a standard 3mm blue LED all running at 3 volts. The tongue sensor signal goes through an up amp so that I can get the resolution and sensitivity I need but the other light-based sensors all work just fine with a simple voltage divider and a single resistor. Another very important thing about these analog sensors is of course how I read them on the microcontroller. The open horn reads all the analog sensors at 12 bits of resolution. This gives a maximum reading of 4095, which is four times more than the standard 10-bit resolution. To get a smooth reading with minimum jitter, I have adapted and simplified some of the code from the responsive analog read library and incorporated it into the OpenHorn software. The intensity of this filter, as well as many other calibration options, can be adjusted from within the menu. 
In the next video I will be looking at the main sensors on the body of the open horn. So that means the keys, the octaves and the sliders. See you soon.